Good afternoon. My name is Byron Mansfield. I'm with the Central Texas Amateur Radio Club, and we're doing a fox hunt with Dr. Cox Group here at Ogletree Park, Ogletree Gap Park. And a fox hunt's basically made up of a transmitter, which you'll hear very lightly putting out the tones. And the tones are linked with my call sign and the word fox hunt in Morse code. The tones transmit for about 30 to 45 seconds, and then it takes about 15 seconds at uh, 15 words per minute to transmit my call sign and the word fox hunt in case somebody is listening to the radio and they hear those tones and wonder what this is about. Um, power setup is about one watt today. You can use it at any power level up to around five watts and that would transmit about five to 10 miles. So you could set up a fox hunt in a very large area. Some people set up fox hunts in cities and they start from a place like a city park or city library and they go from there. And the fox, the transmitter might be five miles away. Um, all you need, oh, one thing very important is you use a simplex frequency for this. That is, that way you're not tying up anybody's repeater or causing any problems there. So we use an off-frequency simplex and we check to make sure that it's not being used at the time, which or in this area is very seldom used. Um, you label your transmitter case that has the transmitter in it for the fox hunt very clearly because you want to make sure that if somebody walks by it and sees that box sitting there, they don't call the police and the bomb squad come out and attach a detonator to it and explode it. Okay, so you label it very clearly as to what it is, your phone number, and the information that it is a fox hunt transmitter. Okay, so that is extremely important because you never know who's gonna find that case. Ours has been transmitting today about an hour. It started about an hour ago and it's been transmitting since then. Um, you need a radio, a handheld radio, such as this, any cheap radio will work, or just a receiver that will receive the frequency that you're using. Now this is a, and I hope people don't get upset with it, it's a Bofang radio and it is very inexpensive. You can pick them up for less than $36. And if they get stolen out of the car, I'm not too upset about it. But um, my other radio that's here um, that the young gentleman has in his hand right now, which is okay, is an Anytone radio. Works great, but that's around $350. So there's a difference in price. You don't want to lose a $350 radio. If this $36 boat fang gets wet or somebody steals it, it's not as bad a problem. Um, a loop or Yagi antenna. Here's a two meter Yagi antenna. And you can use just a regular radio antenna with an attenuator things like that to be able to cut the signal down to where you can tell as to where the signal is coming from. Now a Yagi antenna, and if y'all would back up just a hair, as I'll show here, attached to the radio, when you turn the Yagi antenna, When you turn the Yagi antenna when it's transmitting, you look for the largest signal, the most intense signal. And as you get away from the transmitter, 
your signal will decrease. You do this in two locations at least two to three hundred feet apart to start with. And that gives you a, what's called triangulation, where you take two points on a map and join them together. Now if it's a, as I said, a five mile radius area, then you might want to drive a mile down the road and look again and try and triangulate to see what direction you need to go to find that transmitter. And then when you get closer, you do the same thing again. And you keep doing that until you get real close to it and you can find the device. Now, if you don't have a Yagi antenna, in some cases, you can just use a portable radio, and when you get close, you'll be doing this. Use a portable radio with a small antenna. You hold it next to your body, turned on, listening to the signal. And as you turn, your body will actually block the signal. And another trick that you can use is just slowly disconnecting the antenna until just like on your cell phone, you only have one bar or two bars on your cell phone. Well, you see up here in the top corner, you get down to two bars on your meter. And then you do the same thing. You just turn slowly until the signal goes away and then turn back towards the signal. And that means you're pointing right directly towards the device. And as you get closer, you can unscrew the antenna completely off and still hear the transmitter and use your body to block the transmitter and just turn and see which direction you need to go to. Okay? Basically, that is some of the ways that you can do a fox hunt using direction finding antennas, um, using a regular antenna. Uh, some people will stick a short wire into the receiver part and just let it hang down or use a jumper like one of these instead of an antenna. There's different things you can do to lower down the capabilities. This is an extremely good antenna for transmitting within three, four miles of a repeater. But it actually works too good for a, rabbit, a fox hunt. And what some people will do, and this antenna is actually designed for this, is they'll tie them in a knot. You don't want to do that with an antenna that's not designed to do that, okay? And they use it that way to cut down its reception, okay? A small antenna like he's holding, hold it up in the air a little bit. Great, fantastic. Okay, a small antenna like he has is the same thing. Now, as he's holding that, I'll show you. This is, as in the paperwork, an antenna attenuator. And it has four switches on it. And those four switches, I'll let him hold it so I'm not shaking it. Those four switches, are 5 dB loss, 10 dB loss, 20, and 30. Okay, and you can use them combined with each other to decrease the amount of signal that's coming into the radio. And you hold the antenna up next to your body, just like I was talking about, and you turn to see which direction you need to go. And um, that's some different ways that you can do it. Now, in his hand also, right here, hold it right here. Okay, now this is a adjustable attenuator. And this right here is a 40 dB attenuator that's used normally with a spectrum analyzer for cutting down the signal that comes into your spectrum analyzer so that you don't burn it out when you're testing radios. That same 
attenuator can be used for fox hunting to cut down on the signal coming into your radio just like it cuts down the signal going into your analyzer. And that's just the different ways. So we're going to go out here and we're going to actually practice some on looking for the transmitter and um, have some fun. Definitely have fun with it.